Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner. This is the 2021 season breakdown of Enos. A few days ago on Cycling News, I'm reading a quote from Rod Ellingsworth, the director of racing at Enos, and he's quoted as saying 2021 season was one of their best ever for Enos. One of their best ever for Enos is his quote. Now, I'm here to break that story down because there's no way this is one of their best. When you look at the cover, okay, and I love to go beyond the cover on beyond the coverage. So when you look beyond the cover and you look at Rod Ellingsworth's story of trying to sell us all on this is Enos is one of their best seasons ever. They have 35 wins. So it's easy to fall in love with the cover because they won Tour of Swiss, we're talking with Richard Carapaz. They won Roman D with Thomas. Richard Port won Dauphiné. Adam Yates won Catalonia. And don't, let's not forget, Aegon Bernal winning the Giro d'Italia. Now, when you look at that, that's absolutely fantastic. When you add in there Tom Pidcock and Dylan Van Barley semi-classics up in Belgium, beating Wout Van Aert, Tom Pedcock, and then Dylan Van Barley going solo in a beautiful win at Dwarfsdorf Vlanderen, you got to think that, man, this is one of their best wins. But let's break it down beyond the cover, okay? Let's go beyond the cover because here's the problem. When you look at every one of their wins, none of them are against the two Slovenians. So none of those wins came against Tade Pogacar's UAE Team Emirates, except for one. I'm going to bring it back, and then you can then you can tell me if you think that's an important win. And Primoz Roglic, Jumbo Visma, all 35 wins except one. So 34 wins came against other teams that did not have Tade Pogacar in there or Primoz Roglic. Now the one win that they have, they have to pat the back of Filippo Ghana for winning the individual time trial at UAE Tour at the beginning of the season. That was the only victory I could find in the 35 wins that Inos have throughout the 2021 seasons against two of the big, big riders, Primoz Roglic and Tade Pogacar throughout this whole season. Now, we go to the Tour de France. We know Tade Pogacar won the Tour de France, but at no point in time did Inos ever have Tade Pogacar under the knife at any point in time throughout the stages of the Tour de France. In fact, the only time Tadej Pogacar was under the knife was when it was Jumbo Visma's Jonas Vinigo on Mount Ventoux who attacked Tadej Pogacar, put him in the hurt locker for a second, but guess who helped? It was Richard Carapaz back there working with Tadej Pogacar to bring back Jonas Vinigo and try to keep his second and third place on the general classification hopes alive. So, when I look at the seasons, when I'm Enos Grenadiers right now and I'm looking at the season as a whole, am I happy with last year's season? Absolutely not. Would I call it one of the best seasons ever? I certainly would never call that. Now, did I get enough wins? You won the Giro with Aegon Bernal. That's a fabulous win. It's fantastic. So you have marvelous wins that look great on paper to go to the sponsors and continue to have the sponsors and ask them for that big budget because they're one of the biggest budgeted teams in the world tour. So when we're sitting here on Beyond the Coverage, we're comparing Enos Grenadiers to the biggest teams in the world. And we're talking about Jumbo Visma, UAE Team Emirates, Dakuna Quickstep might not have the biggest budget, but we all know they're a fabulous team and they're one of the biggest riders in the world. But when it comes to Dakuna Quickstep, remember they have beat the Slovenians at the one day races. When we're there looking at the classics, we saw Julian Alaphilippe that beat Primoz Roglic on Flesh Wallone. And so we see these bigger teams beating the two Slovenians at times, but never for the main, main goals of the seasons, of course. But Ineos Grenadiers, best season ever. Rod Ellsworth, I do not believe you, brother. There's no way. And then you're quoted saying right after those words of best seasons ever that you guys need to reassess and find a way to be able to become more dominant in the Tour de France. I'll add the link so you guys can read what he said right there on Cycling News so we can be more clear. But I always hate when I'm reading articles and they're talking about this was a fabulous season or a great season. When you're a team of Ineos Grenadiers, style and class and top, top paid riders, then 
You got to win against the best in the world at some point in time, and it can't be an individual time trial at UAE at the UAE tour in the beginning of the 2021 season. Now, what do they have to do to be able to come back and get that high level? Now, Garrett Thomas, I read today this morning on Cycling News that it looks like he's pretty close to signing again with Ineos. Now, they have to keep him. In my book, when I'm looking at their roster, and they have fabulous riders, when I'm talking about winning Tour of Swiss, every one of these wins, these riders as individual can call the 2021 season successful. Egon Bernal can go back home to Colombia and say, hey, this was my second most successful season ever next to the win at the 2019 Tour de France. When you look at Richard Port, he could say, wow, this was a fabulous season. I won big races, Dauphiné, and I was at the front of the other big races. But when you group all those guys together, you cannot call the 2021 season successful and certainly not one of your best seasons ever when Enos have dominated seasons from top to bottom with multiple different riders. Now, let's get back to G. Thomas because they cannot afford not to sign G. Thomas. In my book, I have a lot of problems with G. Thomas. He crashes often. Maybe gets a little too heavy in the winter time. Maybe takes life a little bit too easy when he's not fully, fully motivated to go for that Tour de France win or one of the other objectives throughout the season. But in my book, G. Thomas is the only hope at this moment that Enos have of beating the two Slovenians when we're talking about the Tour de France next year. Problem is you got to get him through the cobblestone stage. It's going to be difficult. We all know G. Thomas has a problem crashing. Cobblestones aren't going to be friendly for him. So he's going to have a lot of obstacles to get through that first week at the Tour de France. But when you look at his 2018 Tour de France win, he won 2018 Tour de France with that kind of form that we're seeing from the Slovenians where he can't be hurt anywhere. On the high mountains, he's beaten riders. In the time trials, he looks fantastic. He's always with the front guys. He's always up there at the top. That 2018 season at the Tour de France for G. Thomas is the one reason why Ineos have to sign Thomas for next year and need to get it done fast. Now, one other mistake that they made this year. They did not sign Rowan Dennis. Now, Rowan Dennis going to different teams, no problem. If you want to let him to go to any other team other than UAE team or Yambo Visma where he signed, I'm okay because Rowan Dennis is not going to give Ineos headaches when you're talking about winning individual time trials, winning a stage here or there, helping riders from the breakaway win. But when you let Rowan Dennis go away to Yambo Visma and now he's able to ride the front through the cobblestone stages, through the middle, through the middle medium stages, and then still be strong for Primoz Roglic on the mountain stages, that's a catastrophic mistake. So Rod Ellingsworth, when you are the director of racing and it's your job to sign riders to help you win the Tour de France, which you guys have not been able to win for the last two seasons, and you let a rider like Roland Dennis go away to your competition, that is like a six-point swing. If we're talking NBA basketball and you shoot up a three-pointer and you had no chance of making that, you miss, they run it back, they hit a three, that's a six-point swing. When you let Rowan Dennis, a quality rider like Rowan Dennis, a domestique that can ride fabulous miles on the front, in the mountains, time trials, everything. When you let him go to Yumbo Visma or a team like UAE Team Emirates, that's a catastrophic mistake. You should have just paid him extra money and let him sign with any other team possible or kept him on your team and just don't bring him to the Tour de France if there's a problem, for some reason, a personal issue, and that's why you got rid of him on Enos. But 2021 season, you guys can leave comments and let me know what you think. But remember, I'm beyond the coverage. You have to look beyond the cover when you start reading interviews and they're talking about it being the best season ever. Rod, you are crazy. This is not one of the best seasons ever. In fact, you guys should be in panic mode and I believe you are in panic mode because next season, if you lose the Tour de France again, if you get beat at every race that the two Slovenians show up at, then you got to believe there's going to be a big reshuffle throughout the Ineos team to try to get somebody in there that can get this team back to the glory days of Chris Froome dominating the Tour de France, Garrett Thomas dominating the Tour de France 2018, 
and let me not forget Bradley Wiggins winning in 2012. That is what this team has to live up to. And not only during those seasons when they won the Tour de France, but they dominated all the other races too, like they saw, like the wins that we've seen them here at this 2021 season, except for they beat the best riders in the world when they did those wins. So Rod, you're crazy. I'm calling your bluff on Beyond the Coverage. Make sure you leave me your opinion in the comments on whether or not if you think 2021 seasons was one of Enos's greatest ever. And let me remind you, I remember that Richard Carapaz won the Olympics, but that does not count because he was not riding as Enos during the Olympics. And we all know the Belgians mess up the tactics all the time when they're racing for their national team. So that does not count. Do not leave that one in there. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon on the next edition of Beyond the Coverage.